You're watching Spirit and Truth Ministries on YLC TV with Mark Moore Jr. Your strength, healing, and empowerment starts now. Yeah. 
There's one verse of scripture that I want to read tonight. Out of the sixth chapter of the book of Mark, if you'll pray with me. I trust that those of you that are watching at home have shared this worship service with somebody. Those of you watching on the Word Network, I trust you shared this with somebody. And I trust that you're registering for next year's conference now. I have information that's on your screen. But look at me and look with me in Mark chapter number 6. Look with me in Mark chapter number 6. Mark chapter number 6. A very familiar passage of Scripture for many of us that have been in church, to church, through church for any length of time. And that is verse number 35. The Bible declares, it says, and when the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, this is a desert place, and now the time is far past. I want you, if you would, just put your phone, your tablet, your Bible down for a moment and just slip your hand in the hand of your neighbor and squeeze life into that hand, squeeze peace into that hand, squeeze joy into that hand. Squeeze favor into that hand. Squeeze hang on to that hand that wants to let go. Squeeze don't give up into that hand that's been considering it. I want you to get ready to pray for them as if your life depends on it because uh, when you realize that we're helpers one to another, you recognize that you can't win if your neighbor doesn't win because you are your brother's keeper. And I want you to begin to pray without me telling you what to say, without me putting words in your mouth. I want you to squeeze life into that hand and begin to pray all over this house. One, two, three, open your mouth and begin to pray. Come on, come on. Come on, young leaders. Pray, 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 pray. Pray for your role. Pray for their destiny. Pray for their peace. Pray for their favor. Pray for their anointing. Pray, 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 pray for opportunities to chase them down. Pray for healing to break out in their body. Pray for deliverance to hit their house. Come on, pray, pray, pray. You're waiting on me. God's waiting on you. Come on. Yeah, that's right. Come on. You're almost there. Open your mouth. Your neighbor needs this strength. Your neighbor needs this strength. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, that saving name, that healing name, that delivering name, that name above every name, that name that causes knees to bow and tongues to confess. Lord, to, yeah, Lord, tonight before we ask you for anything, we thank you for everything. For this day you've allowed us to see, Lord, we thank you. For the gift of the Holy Ghost, Lord, we thank you. For your presence that we feel in this building, Lord, we thank you. We ask now that you do what only you can, heal, save, deliver. Throw your weight around in this place. Break chains, destroy yokes, do what only you can. And Satan, because we know you're listening anyhow, we remind you that you're still defeated. You have no authority and you're trespassing in the lives of God's people. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Every believer, shout amen. Shout amen one more time. You may return to your seated place, but I want to preach for just a few moments tonight. From this simple message, and I need you to help me preach tonight. Help me, help me tonight. Get this word out and tell somebody these words. Look at them and tell them, say, neighbor, it's not too late. Yeah, it's not, it's not. I don't care what you heard, don't care what you thought, what you heard, what you felt. Tell one more neighbor, say, neighbor, it's not too late. Brothers and sisters, saints and friends, Wherever you are, wherever you're from tonight, I think that all of us would agree that there are situations that will arise in the life of every believer, situations that will arise in the life of every leader that will question, or cause us rather, to sometimes question whether or not we have missed our moment. There's some of you that came to this conference from all over the world all across this country, and some of you, your prayer was, while I'm in Atlanta, I need the Lord to confirm in me that I'm in the place and in the sphere and in the lane that I'm supposed to be in because all this time I've been there, I've not seen the fruit that I thought I would have seen by now. Sometimes you feel that it's too late to be delivered because you've been bound so long 
that you've gotten comfortable in your chains. Sometimes you feel that because you've been sick so long, maybe God does not want to heal you. Maybe that miracle that they told you had your name on it was really for somebody else. The truth of the matter is sometimes this happens because we live in a world and our world does not line up with the word that God has spoken over us. We live in constant frustration because our word and our world don't match. You have a word over your life that says, my God shall supply all of my needs. But the world you live in when you leave this place reminds you that you've got bills that you cannot pay. You have a word over your life that says that, that he was bruised for our iniquities, wounded. Y'all know what the scripture says. With his stripes, I'm healed. But yet and still, you've got prescriptions all on your nightstand for medications trying to fight a disease in your body. But I came to tell somebody tonight that will receive it that all you need is for your word and your world to line up. And I want to submit to you tonight that I believe the fact that you're in this room is confirmation that God is getting ready to bring things into alignment in your life. Because the good news is when we look here in this sixth chapter of the gospel according to Mark, we must realize that we were not the first ones to wonder if it was just too late for God to do something special. We have to realize that you in your situation, in your circumstance, no matter what you're facing or what you're up against, I promise you, you are not the first one to wonder whether or not God was still going to come through like he said he would. We, we look here and we see that the text tonight is telling the story of Jesus and his disciples in a situation where they feel that it's just too late. We look in verses 31 and 32 and we find them in this narrative. The Bible says, I want you to read it here in, in your Bible to make sure I'm saying it right. It says, and he said unto them, come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while for there for many coming and going and they had no leisure so much as to eat and they departed into a desert place by ship privately we we usually associate this sixth chapter of mark exclusively with the feeding of the five thousand but we see that there's another narrative taking place here and that is the fact i hope i get a witness here that the disciples are tired hmm. Uh, I know you, you don't say man there. You try to stay straight ahead and don't think that anybody is looking at you. You don't want anybody to think that, that you are in that category because unfortunately sometimes as leaders, we don't want anybody to ever feel that we get tired sometimes. Sometimes as leaders, we don't want anybody to ever feel that, that we are burned out, that we're at the end of our rope. Some of you in here are here because you have been strong for everybody else so long until you don't don't even know if you are going to make it because you've poured strength into everybody else around you. You've poured encouragement into everybody else around you. You've poured strength and peace and joy into others, but here you are working on empty. There are some of you in here that have been ministering on empty all year long. There, there are some of you in here that have been preaching from an empty place, and you're telling people that God is going to make it work, and when you leave the pulpit, you want wonder if you lied to them or to yourself. You're, you're in this place now because God has allowed some of you to get here. I'm going to say it and I hope you respond to it. God has allowed some of you to get here because this is your recharge station. This Ah, I wish I could preach in here for just a moment. Some of you in here, you know what it is to be anointed, saved, sanctified, and tired. You, you know what it is to love God and to love people, but sometimes you don't want to go to church. Don't, don't look around. Your pastor might be in the room, but, but you know what it is to sometimes be frustrated with the assignment that is on your life. And we look on, they're, they're in this place, they're tired. Jesus acknowledges that they're weary and they need to rest. They have not been fed, but we then go and verse 33 and 34 tell us that when they're leaving to go into this desert place, they're leaving their assignment, they're leaving the work that they've been doing, they've been pouring out and they're leaving for a retreat space, if you will, but as they're leaving, the Bible says that they saw them and people begin to run out of the cities and Jesus set them down and begin to teach them in the desert place. They're finally ready to take a 
break. They're finally ready to go to a conference. They're finally ready to do something for them for a change. But Jesus has this habit of being Jesus, and he begins to minister and meet the needs of the people. But that's then what leads us to our text tonight here in verse 35, because it says that now at this point, after they have been serving and assisting him for this time and this ministry moment, it says that when the day was now far spent, everybody say far spent, it says that his disciples came to him and said, Jesus, this is a desert place and now the time is far past. There, there, there are two things that I have to tell you that stand out about this particular verse of scripture before we leave and get out of here tonight. But the first thing is they tell us that the day is far spent. The day is far spent. The sun is going down. It's getting late in the evening. It's getting dark outside. It's getting dark outside. Visibility is low. And I got to pause and tell somebody that some of you in here are in a place where visibility is low for you. Your, your, your vision is challenged in this season. Your, your vision is under attack in this season. You're wondering, did I hear God right? Did I miss him? Did I, did I get the right instruction? Did I get the right marching order? I don't, I don't see how he's going to do it. I don't see how he's going to make it happen. I'm this age I'm in now and thought that I would be in a different place by now. Now, who, who am I talking to in here that knows what it is to be questioning and wondering whether or not you're in the place that you're supposed to be in? It's getting late. You, you've been told that you're too old for that to happen for you now. You, you've been told that, that you should have done that years ago if that was going to happen. You, you've been told, some of you in here now, that you have missed your window of opportunity. But, but not only is it late in the evening, but the second thing that shows us here that we see in this verse is that they are in a desert place. They are, they're in, they're in, they're in a desert place. And what you got to understand is that nothing grows in a desert. I just about feel the help now. Nothing, nothing grows in a desert. Flowers don't grow in a desert. Trees don't grow in a desert. Rivers don't flow in a desert. Shrubs don't grow in a desert. I want to tell somebody, however, that I was praying about what to share with y'all tonight. And the Lord said, to tell you that there's one thing that grows in your desert place. And I said, Lord, what is it? And the Lord told me to tell you that the only thing that grows in a desert is faith. Yeah. And I got to tell somebody in here that feels as if you're in a desert place that what you got to realize is that it's in your desert place that you find out who God is. I wish I had a witness in here. It's, it's, in, it's in your desert place that you discover that he's more than just the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's, it's in your desert place that you discover that, that he's more than just the God of your mother and your father and your pastor and your bishop. But is there anybody in here that can testify, I thank God for my mountains, but, but I didn't learn how to pray until I had a valley. I, I thank God. I thank God for my victories. I thank God for the open doors. I thank God for the favor that I've walked in, but I did not learn how to trust him until I found myself in a position where nothing was working but my prayer life. Nothing was working but my faith. I, I didn't know who God was, and, and that's why some of you in here, the reason we had to sit you down is because your memory works too well, and you, you remember the fact that while we see you at the conference and, and we see your highlights sometimes you got to tell folks you don't know my behind the scenes story you don't know you don't know what I've been through or where I've come from and, and sometimes you got to learn how to tell folk you know that there's some stuff I testify about and you know that God made this way you know that God opened that door but sometimes I hope I get a real one here sometimes you got to learn how to tell folk sometimes my public praise is for my private testimony when you see me run around the convention center that, that that's for the stuff you don't know about when you see me lift my hands when you see me shout and dance and jump for joy. That's for the stuff that God did behind closed doors. He kept it off the news. He kept it out. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here now. Is there anybody in here that can give God a public praise for a private testimony right here? 
No, 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 you playing with me. I said open up your mouth and, and celebrate the fact that even in your desert place, you can celebrate because that's where you discover that he's more than just the God somebody said can heal, but you know he's a healer, yeah. Maybe that's why the old church used to say, if I never had a problem, how would I know that God can solve it? If I, if I never had a sickness, how would I know that God is a healer? They're, they're in a desert place. It's getting dark outside there. Their visibility is challenged. But then we see what the Lord wanted me to tell you in verse number 36. And in verse number 36, it says that the disciples come up with the plan. The people are there and we discover that the people are hungry. We discover that the people have no food because verse 36 says that they make a suggestion to Jesus. Look at what they said. They said, send them away that they may go into the country round about them and into the villages and buy bread because they have nothing to eat. Now, remember these are disciples of Jesus. These are men that have devoted their life to the work of Christ. These are men that have left their professions and their stability to support the mission of this man named Jesus. And here it is that their suggestion is we should send the people away. Here, here's what the Lord told me. Because of the stress that they're under because of the pressure that they're feeling, the situation that has surrounded them, they're really nervous to the point that they're willing to send their assignment away from them. They're in a place now where they're willing to get away and separate from the very thing that God has instructed them to do. I got to preach here and tell somebody that I feel you in my spirit. I've been praying for you. I've been, I've been looking to this conference and waiting on you to get here since last year's conference ended and, and I feel that the Lord put in my spirit that there are some of you that are on the verge of sending your assignment away. There, there's some of you in here that are on the verge of quitting and throwing in the towel. There, there are some preachers that I'm preaching to, some itinerant preachers that have no itinerary and you're thinking about maybe I miss God and didn't hear him clearly. There, that there are some entrepreneurs in here right now that have no business plan yet. It's not coming together. You wrote it out. You did the research. You went to school. You, you've got all the steps in place but nothing seems to be coming together. There's some of you in here that have ideas and visions on the inside and, and you're wondering if it's ever going to happen. In fact, I hear the Lord saying that some of you, you came to this conference and you drafted a resignation letter for the Lord. You said, I'm not going to do this anymore. I, I could be better off doing something else. But can I tell you but God said I read your resignation letter and I ripped it up because you can't quit the assignment you didn't call yourself to in the first place I need you to tell the people on your row real quick open your loud mouth and tell them say neighbor you are not allowed to quit in this season no, you got to say it better than that to somebody. Tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them. Say, neighbor, you are not allowed to throw the towel in. In fact, if you throw it in, God says, I'm throwing it back because you've got more work to do. I know that the things have not lined up the way that you thought that they would, but I need you to tell somebody beside you again. Tell them, neighbor, God said you can't quit. God, God, God said you can't give up on your business yet. God, God said you can't give up on your family yet. God said you can't give up on that idea yet. God said you can't give up on your ministry yet. You can't quit your church yet. You can't hang your collar up yet because somebody needs to open up your mouth and just declare it's not too late. Hmm. It's not too late. It's not. It's not. Put that in your name. I feel the Holy Ghost now. Put that in your atmosphere. Put that in your neighborhood. Turn and tell somebody. Just tell them. Say, God said it's not too late. God, God, God said you're not allowed to quit. You're not allowed to quit. You're not allowed to quit. God said you got to hang on in there. You, you, you got to stay in. You told him that you would be all in. And now you got to make up your mind that I'm going to be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of the water. And while the winds may, I may lean sometimes but I will not fall over because I realize that it's not too late. 
high. They're, they're in this place and they want to quit. But Jesus says in verse number 37, he says, give you them food to eat. And they, they looked at him. You know this story, don't you, young leaders? They looked at him and said, Lord, well, we would feed him. We would feed them if we could. But there is no grocery store around here. There is, there is, there is no market around here. And they said, what would you like us to do? How are we supposed to do this? But what I like about this is not only are they trying to get out of what God has told them to do, but notice that they begin to tell Jesus about what they don't have in their possession. They, they begin to tell the Lord, the one that knows the beginning from the end, they begin to tell him with their finite understanding what it is that they are able and not able to do. They, they begin to go into the fact that, Lord, we know that sounds good for us to get the job done, but, but they said, Lord, we, we just don't have it. Lord, we just can't afford it. Lord, we don't have the resources to get it done. Lord, we don't have the relationships to get it done. I'm coming down your road because some of you, you were not there in this desert with Jesus, but you have had this conversation because you said, Lord, I would start the business, but I don't have the network yet. Lord, 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 I would go back to school, but I don't have the money for it yet. Lord, I would step out in faith, but they don't know me like that yet. They, they begin to tell Jesus what they did not have, but the problem is, listen to me now, they did what we do, and they looked at what they didn't have instead of acknowledging what they did have, because I got to tell somebody in here tonight that it doesn't matter what you don't have in your life. It doesn't matter who's in your phone and who's not in your phone. It doesn't matter who you can get on speed dial and who you can't get on speed dial. It doesn't matter what your mama was, what your daddy was, what your family is known for, what your credit score is. I want to tell a praiser in here that all you need to focus on is this. If God be for me, Hmm. Ah, he's more than the world that can be against me and, and they then go on and I'm telling you the story here going somewhere but verse 38 says that he says to them well here's my question how many loaves do you have wait a minute Jesus you you want us to feed 5,000 strong what what do you mean what do we have we don't have anything he says no look again how many loaves do you have he says go and see and when they went. The Bible tells us that they found a little boy uh, that had a little lunchbox with him and he had two pieces of fish and, and five loaves of bread. And, and what's interesting to me is this. You've got these grown disciples that have walked with Jesus, that have served Jesus, that have been with Jesus, that have followed Jesus. You've got these grown disciples here and then you find that the solution that they need for the moment is in the possession of somebody here it is from a younger generation God help me here you, you see that what the moment required the next generation had it but it was useless until they submitted it to the ones that had been here longer and I came to stand here tonight and tell you that young leaders conference exists in part to declare war on this intergenerational beef y'all ain't saying nothing to me here we came to break the myth and the stereotype that, that God can only move one way and God can only use one circle. I want to stand and declare that God still has some young people that believe in authority. Oh, I thought I had a little more help in here than that God. God still got some young folk that believe in submission, but God also has some fathers and some mothers that are not threatened by your gift. And I want to let somebody know that what this moment in time that we're living in needs is for all God's children, for both generations to get together and work together. And I need you to look up and down your row and just tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, we've got to put the work in now. Uh, no, you didn't say it like I need you to say it. Tell somebody, say, neighbor, we've got to put the work in now. He looks at them and says, what do you have? And the question that I want to ask somebody before we leave this sanctuary tonight is when was the last time you did an inventory on what God has placed in you? When was the last time? I know that you talk about who you don't have and what you don't have and where you can't go and what you're not involved in and 
who you're not connected to. But I want to ask you, when was the last time you evaluated what God has put in your possession? Because what I want to tell somebody in here that will shout on a Friday night in Atlanta is that what the Lord wants us to know before we leave is that you can win with what you already have. Ah, no, I need you. I need you to look up and down your row and just tell your neighbors and neighbor, you can win with what you already have. Oh, no, that's not the right neighbor. Tell somebody else that, that don't look like it, but they've been wondering whether or not they could make it another step further. Tell them you can win with what you have. Because Jesus asked them the question. He said, tell me, what do you have? And I want to tell somebody tonight that that's the same question that God is asking right now. And somebody in here ought to give God praise here because even when you thought you were down to nothing, you discovered that God was up to something. I wish you would just lean over and just tell your neighbors and neighbor, God is up to something in my life right now. Tell them, say, I know that God is up to something because everything else that I've tried has now failed. Tell your neighbors and neighbor, I know that God is up to something because things that should have worked have not worked. And I just believe that God is getting me in a place where he's going to put me in a situation that when I come out of what I've been in, they won't say, look what their degree has done. But when I come out of what I've been in, they won't say, look at what their last name has done. But I need you just to tell somebody beside you. Tell them, say, when you come out of this situation, tell them, say, they will look at you and say, this is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our sight. Lord, I wish I could have church in here with somebody for a minute. Why don't you just lean over and grab your neighbor by the hand and say, oh, neighbor. Y'all ain't saying like I need you to say it. I said, grab your neighbor by the hand and say, oh, neighbor. The Holy Ghost said to tell you that it's not too late for your miracle because God wants to know what you have. You may feel like you're all out of resources, but God wants to know what do you have. And I need you to help me preach here for a moment. Put your hand on your neighbor's shoulder and say, neighbor, one of the best gifts I have is standing right next to me now. Because one can chase a thousand, but two can put 10,000 to flight. I just about feel my help now. And so I believe that with 5,000 of us in here, we ought to be able to turn the world upside down. I got to leave y'all here. But they asked Jesus, what do you want us to do? And they said, y'all feed them. They said, we don't have the money. We don't have the ability to do it. But they said, what can you come up with? They brought him that lunchbox. And he commanded them in verse 39 to sit down by companies upon the green grass. I'm in verse 39 now. But I got a problem in verse 39. Because the Bible said that they were in a desert place. Have I got a witness in here? The Bible says they were in a desert place. I already told you that nothing grows in a desert. But now they look in and Jesus says, he says, sit down here. Not in the sandbox, but he says, sit down in the green grass. And I got to get out of here now. But I need you to tell somebody, say, whether you know it or not, say, God is changing your circumstance right underneath your feet. I wish I had somebody that would just open up your mouth now. 
But give, but give God praise because you know what happens next. He takes the five loaves and it blesses it and then it breaks it and then it multiplies it. And I'm going to my seat now, but I want to tell somebody that this is where some of you are. You've been in the master's hands and you've been wondering what was going on. You've been all worked up because it's not working out for you. But God told me to tell you that I had to break you to give you to the world. Tell your neighbor, say, I feel like preaching now. Tell your neighbor, say, I. I understand what I had to go through. I understand why they talked about me. I understand why they lied on me. You had to go through it so you could be distributed to somebody that needs you. And the good news is, if you're broke in the night, you got to remember that it blessed you first. And I came to tell you. On behalf of the Lord tonight, that you might be broken, but you're still blessed. Your money might be broke, but you're still blessed. Family might be broke, but you're still blessed. And in that moment, when God began to bless, break and multiply, what we discovered is that in a desert place with not enough resource, in a desert place, place uh, with no support system uh, in a desert place uh, with no network uh, we see that God uh, can remind us uh, that it's not too late uh, I got to leave you here uh, but one more time uh, tell your neighbor uh, say neighbor uh, the Holy Ghost said uh, it's not too late uh, cause you gotta know uh, that no weapon uh, Formed against you shall be able to prosper. You got pain in your body, but it's not too late. Because I want you to know that with this rhymes, I'm already healed. You might be in trouble, but you need to know it's not too late. Because God said in his word that my God shall supply all my needs. Is there anybody in this house now that can open your mouth and give God praise? Because you know that the devil is a liar. You know now that they told him you wasn't going to make it. But is there anybody in here that can give God glory? Because you understand that when you give it all over to Jesus, you got time. I want to tell you here, you may not believe it, but I want to let you know that if God said it, it's already done. Because God said to tell somebody in this service here, I got to make my report. I got to make my report. And I came to report to YLC that I've been to places and I've seen some things. I've been to New York and seen the Empire State Building. I've been to California and seen the Redwood Forest. I've been to Nigeria and seen the oil fields. I've been to Ghana and seen the slave castles. I've been to London and seen the changing of the guard. But there's one thing, there's one thing I've never seen. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Let's go higher. If you know you got time, open your mouth, lift your voice, and give God glory right now. Right now, grab somebody and say, Name, I believe that God is getting ready to show up in your life. And so then, I'm not going to wait. 
till the battle's over. I'm not gonna wait till I see it, but I will bless the Lord for what I have not seen and ears have not heard. I said eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. I said eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. I said eyes have not seen. Y'all ain't happy. Ears have not heard. If you claim it, shall not, shall not, shall Tell three people, it's not too late. I said, tell three people, it's not too late. God still got time. You're in the fourth quarter, but that's comeback time. And I declare now over this conference that we're to a comeback season because it's our day it's our day for a comeback it's our day for revival somebody praise him now I said sound like you got time One more name, I still got time. Tell him I still got time. Na, 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 na. Yeah. Everybody stay. Lift your hands in the house. this in my spirit I gotta tell you I need you to help me get this out tell somebody say neighbor the truth is you were out of time but tell them the good news is and I hope they respond right tell them say neighbor God has reset the clock When you go back home where you came from, you better get back to work. You better get back on your post. Go back to your assignment. Go back with fresh vigor. Go back with fresh wind. Go back with fresh anointing. Go back with fresh power. Because God's taking you to overtime. gotta stop it's not too late it's not too late it's not too late it's not too late for your ministry it's not too late for your vision it's not too late for your business oh, I know it's late in the evening oh and I wish I could have preached like I wanted to it's late in the evening you're sitting and watching everybody else surpass you this is what I came for right here. You watch everybody else go. They're less qualified. They're less consecrated. They're less disciplined. They're less educated. You put all this work in and look where you are. And you've allowed the devil to tell you that God has changed his mind about you. But I came to tell you that no matter what it feels like, God said it's not too late. Jesus, you don't understand. I'm tired. No, Jesus, you don't get it. I'm tired. 
I'm burnt out. I don't want to minister no more. Jesus, you don't understand. I'm exhausted. I'm on E. I've got nothing else to give. I have no poor in me. I need a break. I need to stop. I need to quit. But Jesus hears your excuses and gives you a question. What do you have? What do you mean, what do I have? Huh? You told me to feed them. I, you know, we've been with you. We don't have nothing. No, no. Look again. What do you have? Lord, all we have is this. And there are a lot of you in here right now. And you told God, God, all I have is this. This social media platform. This small network. This little education. This little bit of money. All I have is this. But here's the whole message right here. That little bit that you have multiplies when you put it in the right hands. He takes it. Blesses it. He breaks it. He gives it away. He takes it. He blesses it. He breaks it. He gives it away. He takes it. He blesses it. He breaks it. He gives it away. He keeps doing this until, listen, everybody has eaten. But after everybody has eaten, the Bible says they take up 12 baskets of leftovers. Now, you, you, some of you are not going to catch this, but I hope some of you will. When God really shows up and shows out in your life, he never leaves you with just enough. I can see who the bougie fuck are that don't know about no leftovers. But the fact that you have leftovers is indication that you had more than you needed at the time. And can I prophesy to somebody and tell you that God is about to give you more than you need? Oh, I wish somebody would hear what I'm saying. You better believe me. God is about to give you more than you need. Because it's not too late. All over this room, I want to open this altar for some men, for some women, for some leaders, for some preachers, for some singles, for some entrepreneurs, for some creatives, for some women in ministry. I want to open this altar for some of you that feel, and this is a safe space, we're being honest. Some of you that feel that maybe eh, I'm a little too late. If it was going to happen, it would have happened by now. And we're standing here because this is the most important part of our worship right now. Somebody's life is on the line. Somebody's destiny is on the line. I want to ask you to hold your walking. Because I want to invite somebody to come to this altar that knows that there's more God has for you. And unless God is a liar, you can't be done yet. I want to open this altar. I'm going to count to three, and I want everybody in here that's been in a place in this season of your life where you've wondered. No, you haven't given up. You're still here. You're still serving. You're still functioning. You're still doing what you do. But you're wondering, am I wasting my time? Should I be doing something else? I want you to get ready to come to this altar because God is getting ready to reset your clock tonight. God's getting ready to reset your clock. It won't always be like this. They're coming now. Lord will perfect that concerning me. You need to know sooner or later. That's right, come on. It's not too late. It's gonna turn. Sooner or later, come, come, it's going to turn, get as close as you can, get as close as you can, come on, sing, I believe it will, one more time, say sooner, it's going to turn, Sooner than later. Oh, oh, oh. It's not too late. You better get to this altar. God's about to do something here. Come on. I believe. Say it out of your mouth. Say sooner than later. One more time, say sooner. sooner Connect with somebody at the altar in will. Sooner. Sooner. 
squeeze life into that hand of this altar. Come on, everybody, connect with somebody. Connect with somebody at this altar. Connect with somebody at this altar. Oh, there, yeah, there's strength being imparted right now. There's strength being imparted right now. There's strength being imparted right now. You're not going to give up. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. Your brother Mark Moore came to tell you you're not going to give up because God's given you more time. Here's what I hear the Lord say. God says, I'm about to redeem the time. That's what I hear in my spirit. I'm about to restore unto you that which the caterpillar and the canker worm has devoured. God told me to tell yes, I feel the Lord in here now. God told me to tell you that I can do more with less time than you could by yourself with all the time. Ooh. Squeeze life, squeeze life, squeeze life. There's some of you, even in those pews, I appreciate you, those chairs, I appreciate you. Even out there, I want you to connect with somebody. Oh. Come on, strength is being imparted right now, sooner than later. Help is coming right now. Strength is coming right now. Sooner than later. I'm getting ready to pray, but God's doing something right now. It will turn. Come on, say sooner. I'm not going to give up. I thought about it, but I'm not going to give up. I'm, I'm going to try again. I'm going to go back to my post. I'm going back to my assignment. I've been empty. I've been tired. But God's not only about to use me to bless somebody. He's going to give me enough to take home with me. <laughs> God's not about to just use me to bless a generation and to bless my friends and to bless my circle. But I'm about to have enough to take back home to me. God's about to put you back together again. On the count of count of three. I want us to pray at this altar. And this entire sanctuary is an altar right now. This entire sanctuary is an altar right now. You're squeezing life into that hand. You're squeezing hang on into that hand that wants to let go. You're squeezing try again into that hand that's fed up. You're squeezing look at it another way into that hand that's ready to close the book on it. And on the count of three, I want you to begin to pray. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Hey, I want you to begin to pray at this altar on the count of three. And I want it to sweep across the sanctuary. This is not a prayer for houses and cars. I didn't, I didn't. The Lord told me not to preach a shouting message. The Lord told me not to preach. Everything's about to be your way. Everything's about to come. The Lord told me to tell you he's about to redeem your time. You are not too late. I came to confirm what you've been trying to tell yourself but couldn't get it out. You are not too late. You have not missed your moment. You are not irrelevant. You are not obsolete. God's hand is on you. God's getting ready to use you. Your best days are ahead of you. You're about to do signs, wonders, and miracles. Your legacy will prosper. Your legacy will be known. You might not have come from a legacy family, but a legacy family is going to come from you. You might not come from generations of holiness, but holiness is being produced in you right now. Your city's going to be better. Your future's going to be better. Your children are going to prosper. The works of your hands shall prosper. Generational cycles are being broken. What mama went through, you ain't going through. What daddy was, you won't be. What happened then won't happen now. On the count of three, begin to walk the spirit for them. One, two, three, pray, church. Come on, pray at this altar. 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 Right now, in the name of Jesus, I want you to squeeze the life into that hand. I want you to squeeze peace into that hand. I want you to squeeze joy into that hand. And declare over their life. I speak over your life. Your vision shall live. Your vision shall prosper. Come on, young leaders. War for your brother. War for your sister. I speak over your life. God's about to hit fast forward on your destiny. I speak over your life. God's about to hit fast forward on your assignments. 
I speak over your life. You are not done. No matter what happened to you, no matter what you used to be, no matter where you came from, God is fixing it now. God is healing it now. Y'all better go there. There's an anointing in this house. There's an anointing in this house. There's an anointing in this house. Come on, church. Come on, preacher. Pray until your fire comes back. In the name of Jesus. Come on, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth in the name of Jesus. There it is. Come on, come on, come on. Don't play with it. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. It's not too late. It's not too late. Yes, woman. Come on, open your mouth. Come on, there's a wave of glory at this altar. In the name of Jesus, there's a wave of glory at this altar. There's a wave of glory at this altar. There it is. In the name of Jesus. Come on, it's increasing right here. It's increasing right here. In the name of Jesus. There it is. Healing take place. Deliverance take place. There it is. Breakthrough take place. You'll be destroyed. You'll be destroyed. I'm going to get myself together. I'm going to get myself together. I hear the sound of repentance in the room. I hear the sound of repentance in the room. God is restoring right now. There it is. Come on, church. In the name of Jesus. Come on, church. Come on, church. It's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late. You got another 30 seconds. There it is. It's not too late. It's not too late. Come on, cry out, cry out, cry out, cry out. Now without the sound of the music, let me hear you worship like God's given you more time. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. It's not too late, it's not too late, it's not too late, it's not too late. Come on, lift up your hands, lift up your voice.
Come on, open your mouth. Every choir member, open your mouth. Every minister, open your mouth. Come on, come on. It's not too late. It's not too late. You waste. Receive it. Receive in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, hungry folk. Ah. Lift those hands one more time. Time, one more time. Everybody say, We give, we give, we give, we give, we give, we give. Come on, say. We worship you. You are. Make it personal. We're getting ready to go. Make it personal. I give, I give, I give, I give, I give, I give. You are all the glory. I worship you, Lord. I give one more time. I give you all. You say it out of your mouth. Make it sound like heaven in here. Say. I worship you, my Lord. Say now. Salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord. Come on, while sing for the Lord our God, for the Lord our God is mighty. Yes, the Lord. Let me just hear the people say it. Just the people say, come on, say, all oh, praises say, say, sound like an army. La, na, 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 na. Say it, church. Come on. Salvation.
that says, you know what, I'm looking ready to go. There might be somebody that says, you know what, I, I, I believe that God has given me more time. Listen, but I'm going to use this time to get some stuff right. I'm going to use this, I'm, I'm going to use this time to get some stuff out of me. I, I, some of my trouble is, is stuff that I brought on myself, but I'm going I'm to use this time. This time will be different. The way I use this moment will be different. I know that God can multiply that which has been broken and that which has been blessed, but I want to talk to somebody for just a moment. Someone here tonight might not have the gift of the Holy Ghost. Somebody here tonight, maybe something happened to you in this service that you ain't had happened to you before. You heard yourself speaking another language you didn't learn in class. I don't want you to be alarmed. I don't want you to be afraid. It's nothing but what they saw in the book of Acts. When they saw those that came out of the upper room, they said, these folk are drunk, these folk are drunk, these folk are drunk. And they were, Andre, they were, but they told him, they said, we, we, we're not drunk as you suppose. But this is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel that in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Tonight, as we get ready to go down from here, there might be somebody here that says, Mark, I, I want a fresh start. I need a clean slate. Let me, let me tell you how simple it is. It's so simple. God can do it for you right now. It's so simple. They asked the same question in the book of Acts in the New Testament church. They said, what, what, what do we have to do to be saved? They said, it's very simple. We make it so spooky and scary sometimes and deep and you feel like you got to go to school and get a degree for it. No, it's very simple. He said, number one, all you got to do is repent. Now, let me help you because repentance is more than just saying I'm sorry no 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 repentance is a turning I was going this way I feel that this isn't what God wants I'm turning I'm going another direction we've made repentance a dirty word but God wants to restore repentance in our generation yeah yeah yeah, yeah. repent turn turn that's all this it's a turning from what you know breaks God's heart God I, I don't want that no more he said repent but then he said after you repent he said you got to be baptized it's real simple and listen to me this ain't got nothing to do with the kind of church you go to this this has nothing to do stay right where y'all were this has nothing to do with the denomination that you belong to this has nothing to do with that with none of that Baptist Pentecostal apostolic church God in Christ AME non-denominational Catholic the promise is unto you and your children and your children's children as many as far, far all of them over there that the Lord our God's gonna call and say has nothing to do has nothing to do with denomination don't let the devil trick you into missing out on what God has for you because you're stuck on stuff that don't matter 
well, I can't do that because I go to this church. Is, is Jesus Lord in your church? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're not, the, the, it all, everybody's in here. It's not about that. It's about nothing more than obedience to his word. And he said, you must be baptized. And I want to tell you, he, he was very specific. He said, you must be baptized in the name of Jesus. He said, because, listen, 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 listen. No, no, just, just listen. Just listen. He said, because the purpose of this baptism is for the remission or the washing away of sins. The stuff that was on me in the waters of baptism is washed off of me. And I can get up out of that water to walk in the newness of life. There's a start. There's a reset. There's a, there's a cleansing that comes. And we understand through Scripture that there's only one name that has the power to forgive sin. That's it. That's it. Listen, I'm, oh, just, it's in the Bible, y'all. It's in the Bible. And I want to invite somebody tonight. He says, you must be baptized in the name that has the power to fix it. I don't understand what the issue is. We pray in his name. We cast out demons in his name. We lay hands on the sick in his name. Why would, why, why, would we, why would we not be baptized in his name? My mother's here. She wasn't born Shirley Moore. She was born Shirley Boone. But when she became one with Mark Moore, she took on his name. And there are some benefits that she only gets because she has his name. She can't cash a check without his name that's where her access comes from he said repent turn be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus says I just want you to, if you belong to me take my name on don't be ashamed of me he said then after you repented after you've been baptized that stuff is washed away he then made you a promise he said and you shall y'all missed it you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost I don't care. And again, this ain't got nothing to do with what kind of church you go to. Some of you need to step out of your tradition and say, let me try God's way because I might see something different. Yeah. Don't, don't you let somebody that hasn't had what you have tell you it don't work. I want to tell you, you need the Holy Ghost. Oh, no, 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 no. The Holy Ghost no, don't, don't, does, does, not, does not ask you what kind of church you come from before he decides to fill you. All you got to do is decide, I want it. I want his spirit. I, I want his spirit. I want his spirit. I want to I, I lay hands on the sick and watch him recover. I want to speak to mountains and tell them to move because I've got the spirit of God. And if you're here tonight and you're in any of those categories, if you want to repent tonight, you can repent at this altar. Now, the altar's already crowded. That's all right. Don't nobody got to move. We're about to dismiss. But there's some of you that might be up here. You might be out there. You say, what, tonight, I, I, I dare not leave Atlanta with business strategies and principles and connections and good notes, but my spirit is still on life support. Hallelujah. I need a refill. I'm dry. Hallelujah. I'm on E. I need the spirit of God. Some of you might say, I need to repent. But those of you might say, you know what? I want to be baptized. I, I want, there's some stuff in me that I want off of me. There's some stuff that I've done that I carry. There's some shame, some guilt. There, there, there's some rejection that's on me. I need a new start. I need a fresh start. I need a new beginning. I want to be baptized tonight. I want to tell you, we've already made provisions. We got clothes. Listen, I'm, 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 I'm baptizing myself tonight. If you come up here in 30 seconds when I call and ask who wants to be baptized, I'm taking you to the pool myself. And I'm baptizing you tonight. Because I want to be a part of that fresh start in your life. You might say, you know what, I, I, I want to begin again. I want to be baptized. Some, some of y'all got baptized as babies and did a whole lot of stuff since then. You say, I want a fresh start. But then if you're here and you say, I want to be filled with the Spirit of God, I'm getting ready to count to three. The saints are about to rejoice. And if you, I don't care if it's one person tonight. If you say, you know what, Mark, I, I, want, I want to be, I, need, I want a new start. I want a new start. I want to be baptized tonight. I want, I want to take on the name Jesus. I want to take on the name Jesus. If that's you, I want you to come on the count of three. One, two, three. Come, 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 come. If this is your night, come on, come on, come on. If this is your night, come on, come on. One. Y'all help me. If, 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 you, if you want a fresh start, just come on, come on, come on. Here they come, here they come, here they come, here they come. I want to be baptized. I need, I need a do-over. There they come, there they come, there they come. 
Come on, y'all make room at this altar. Come on, then they come, then they come, then they come. Come on, there's somebody else. Don't wait on nobody. I want a fresh start. I want a fresh start. I want a fresh start. I'm washing it off tonight. I'm washing up. Come on, come on. Here they come, here they come, here they come, here they come. There he is. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. It's your night. It's your night. It's your night. It's your night. Come on. I wish somebody would help me with drugs. Come on. There's some, there they come. There they come. There they come. If you want the gift of the Holy Ghost, it's here for you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. They're still coming. That's right. Press your way. Press your way. We're going to sing it one more time. We're going to sing it one more time. Everybody lift your hands. Lift your hands and sing all praise. Oh. Come on, here they come. Where's Matisse? I want you to run. Give, give me my count. We're going over there. You know where we're going. We're going across. Come on, he is. Yeah, 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 yeah. All praise, all. Here they come. Teresa Joy, come over here and help me. Get them. Let's go, let's go. Come on, tonight's your night. Tonight's your night. This conference is your new beginning. If you want to be baptized, come on, come on. If you want to be baptized, I wish somebody would rejoice. Come on. Hey. Come on. Souls getting ready to go down in water. Come on. We believe that they're going to get filled with the Holy Ghost before the night's over. Bishop Moore, come on. He is one. Come on, Bishop. Come on, Bishop. Come on, Bishop. Come on up here. Come on, they're still coming. They're still coming. I'm getting ready to dismiss us, but if you want to be baptized, come on, come on. We're doing it tonight. We're doing it tonight. Come on, that's right. Come on. There they go. Come on, if you're coming, sis, come on. That's right. It's a new start. It's a new start. Come on. too late it's not too late if you say you know what I, I'm not gonna miss my moment I, I want to be baptized too I want the Holy Ghost too it ain't too late for you to come you can still catch him come on come on come on there might be one more there might be one more don't you leave this conference without a change don't you leave this conference the same when you were when you came God wants to do something new in you God wants to do something new in you there they are I see you there they come. I wish I would clap because they're still coming. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Dave, take them to the others. Y'all know where to go. Take them, take them, take them. Listen, we're going down from here. What a night. What a night. What a night. We're going down from here. You can stand to your feet. I want